Hello friends, welcome to a new video concept or idea or series or something like that. I don't know exactly what this is going to turn into, but uh, I made a video recently about uh, geysers, vents, and volcanoes and put them in a tier list. And that video was directly uh, inspired by one of my viewers, Bob the Box. Here's the comment that inspired it. And in that same vein, and also on that video, somebody named Chronicas del Tiempo 7540 left a comment and said, A really cool video would be comparing the different ways to make resources, meaning things like plastic, like Drecos versus Polymer Press, Oxalite, and even something like lime, eggshells, fossils, poke shell moats, etc. So yeah, uh, I thought it was a cool idea too, and I came up with a bunch of different ways you could be producing things, and I'm just going to have them go against each other. I'll kind of like talk about the pros and cons of each of them, and uh, which ones I think are going to be the best, and which ones I think are going to be kind of a waste of time. So uh, the first one I'll be talking about, as you probably saw from the thumbnail or title or whatever, is oil. Um, oil is very commonly available on the base game. So this is actually from a done run that I did uh, for my walkthrough of the base game. And notice how much oil I still have left over. So um, I'm just going to caveat this a little bit to say that it is possible to finish the game without needing that much oil, especially if it naturally occurs like this. But you're not always going to be in that situation. You might not always have uh, direct access to an oil biome. You might need to kind of uh, find other ways to produce it. But yeah, that's going to be kind of what we talk about here. If you have a bunch of options available, which one should you pick? Uh, the oil biome, just as a personal anecdote, is like one of the things that really pushed me into learning this game in, in terms of like getting out of the mid game. I feel like this is one of the harder areas to get into and learn how to work with. But hopefully this series of videos, it's going to cascade into a bunch of other things that have to do with oil anyway. But yeah, hopefully this will be a good starting point and hopefully it'll be some good information. So, all right, I blabbed on enough. Let's get started with the first option. Okay, here's option number one. Slicksters, uh, yeah, just a terrible option and I'll explain why. So number one with these slicksters, obviously they're going to take in carbon dioxide and put out oil. On the surface this sounds great, but I think we need to really measure how much this is. Because um, the conversion from gas to liquid is just, like, there's no comparison there. Orders of magnitude different. There's so many other reasons why. So first of all, let's say we have duplicates that are producing carbon dioxide. And I know there's more than one source of carbon dioxide throughout the game. And that's fine, uh, but duplicants will produce two grams of carbon dioxide a second. Two grams a second. Uh, if it starts to get up to any sort of point that's going to be relevant, uh, in terms of the amount of carbon dioxide, you're already going to be muting it by 50% of the consumed mass just by having it go through slicksters anyway. So let's take a look at this. Carbon dioxide, 20 kilograms per cycle produces at about 50% of consumed mass. So one slickster could theoretically put out 10 kilograms of uh, oil a day. And that is something you will probably never ever get to because of how much this is gonna be required. Uh, so 20, grams, 20 kilograms of carbon dioxide. Let's see what that looks like and then let's see what that looks like in oil or how much that will be. Oh, let me turn on my sandbox tools here. Or how much that will be turned into oil, so you can see how minuscule this absolutely is. Don't worry, I'll explain the other problems with this, but uh, we're going to start here. So, carbon dioxide. Let's say, even down here, uh, it's pretty common to get a good pressure of carbon dioxide just from duplicates breathing up at around, let's say, a kilogram per tile. So, kilogram per tile, in this size room, 32 kilograms. Let's see how much that turns into oil, which we know it already is going to convert at about a 50% amount. Let's put 16 kilograms of oil on the ground so you can see how little this actually is. So I'm going to fill this with a vacuum. Then I'm just going to go into my brush. Uh, oil. 16 kilograms. Here you go. That's it. 
That's all that's going to be produced from effectively a pretty dense section of carbon dioxide. And in order to get this much oil, you're going to have to have your duplicants constantly groom these slicksters. You're going to have to build complicated setups in order to get your slicksters replenished. Uh, you're also going to probably need a heating element because not only do they have the problem of not producing very much crude oil, but here's their egg chances. If their body temperature starts sitting anywhere that is uh, between 20 C and 60 C, which a majority of things around here are going to be between those temperatures, they're going to start producing eggs of a type of slickster that is absolutely useless. Um, these will consume oxygen and really not do much for you at all. So you have to worry about keeping these things at a good temperature, which probably means you're going to need some kind of heat source, which is why I have this water geyser here. And if you could theoretically get yourself up into these molten uh, slicksters, they're not awful. But even still, it's so much work for this. Like, this is a pathetic amount of oil compared to the other sources that we have here. So uh, there's just no other way to say this. Slicksters are terrible. And uh, yeah, fight me. All right, that's all I got for this one. Let's take a look at the next option. Okay, here's our second option. This is the leaky oil fissure. This is something that is a lot more niche than I would particularly like. Also, it's not overly common. So it's hard for me to really hype up something that you're not going to find that often. And also something that's not going to like dramatically change how you play the game. Still, I'm not mad at this. So if you want to run something like this in order to get a little bit of extra power and produce some oil, this is okay. Uh, we can see it erupting here, putting out some crude oil. It does put out a very high temperature, which is kind of part of its appeal. I guess if you wanted to run a boiler for petroleum, um, this is one of the better options, only because it already starts out being very hot. But uh, what you can do with this is you can just set something up that's pretty simple, uh, something that will be connected to metal tiles that will then put the heat into the steam, go into a steam turbine, get a little bit of extra power from it. I have it on a thermo sensor, so this will only be on if there's a lot of power to be gained from this. Uh, but yeah, otherwise it's going to get cooled down, send it into a pump, send it into another room to, or a tank or whatever you want to be able to collect it. The production on this is okay. Um, it's not incredible. So I'm not, yeah, I don't know. I'm not mad at this option, but this is a lot of work to go through just to get a little bit of oil. So I can't in good conscience say that it's really the best option to be getting oil. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Not a whole lot more to say. I guess if you really wanted to, you could hook up a bunch of the... Uh, oh, I forget what these buildings are called. Hang on, let me turn on my sandbox. And let me find the building. It's basically, oh yeah, geotuner. Uh, if you wanted to have some geotuners hooked up to make this a little bit hotter and more production, you could. But I don't know. I just haven't been sold on geotuners really being all that practical compared to some other ways you can get the resources that they're going to help you get. So, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's okay. Not mad at it. Uh, if you want to take it and you want to work with it, that's great. But in, in my game, it's never really something that I would call essential. So, I'll just kind of leave it here. Let's take a look at the last option. Alright, finally a good option uh, is our oil well. Um, this is the most obvious and the most common way to get oil, and it really kind of stands up in terms of uh, practicality, not practicality, that's not even a word. Practicality and accessibility and all that stuff. There's usually a lot of oil wells on pretty much any given map that is capable of producing oil wells. There's already two here. I think there was a third one somewhere over here, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, so these are pretty easy to get to. You just need to feed it some water. It is a decent amount of water, so you do need to make sure you have a good uh, supply of it. So like, if you don't and you're really desperate for it, you can off uh, use some of the other methods. That's why they're there. But the amount of oil that it produces is really a lot. Um, three kilograms per second is quite a bit and way more than those other uh, methods that we talked about. If you take a look at this, you notice that we talked about the theoretical max of how much uh, a slickster could produce and or two slicksters or whatever. This outproduces it within like two seconds compared to an entire cycle. So 
as far as the amount of production that comes out of this, it's really not even close. The only downside from this is you will need duplicates to come down here and release the back pressure, or rather the pressure inside the oil well every once in a while. So a little bit of a dupe time spend compared to it, but the amount that you get here and the ease of use and the accessibility of it, you just gotta say it's a really good option compared to the other ones. So let's take a look at all of them in summary really quick and see which one uh, wins the battle. Okay, here we are at our victory podium. Let's see which of these options is the victor. So we have to start out with the absolute last place. I'm actually, you know what? They're not even going on the podium. It's so bad. Slicksters are terrible. They don't even deserve to be here. There's just an empty space at third place because they're so awful. So they, they have to go there. Second place, definitely going to give it to the leaky oil fissure. It's not my favorite option, but it's okay, especially if you don't have any other options. And finally, you know, we could all see this coming. Oil wells are by far the best option in order to get oil. So yeah, that's it. Uh, I'll be producing quite a bit more of these videos uh, in the future. So I'm going to try to keep them kind of short and quick and to the point. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about what was talked about in this video. I'll be back with another one really soon, so thanks for watching. See you later.